Next up is a writer and a performer. Her name is Rosemary Tumulty. And Rosemary readily admits that much of her writing panders to her fetish for Gothic fiction and Celtic mythology. Having been born in London to parents from Kilkeel, Rosemary now lives in Newry and calls the beautiful Mourns, Cooley and Sleevegullion Mountains home. Lucky Rosemary. However, with the beautiful Carlingford lock on her doorstep, she says that given the option, she'd rather be a mermaid. This evening, Rosemary is reading a story that won the memoir category of the Wexford Literary Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Rosemary Tumulty now reading The Homecoming. The Homecoming. I stand today as a woman in the place that changed my life, in the place I call home. Tiny dots on the horizon, an ominous angry evening sky, waves chewing at the outer pier and harbour walls, the hood of my raincoat flapping wildly as a seagull beating against storm clouds seeking shelter, my ears partly exposed and freezing others sheltering in cars, eyes cast on the horizon, hope and anxiety palpable in the air, a grey seascape tattooed on my brain as slowly, imperceptibly, the tiny dots grow brighter, moving from the horizon onto the grey matted blanket that undulates and threatens to envelop them, like Jonah swallowed whole, floating in the belly of a whale, leaving not a trace. And I remember the overwhelming tang of herring, seaweed and diesel oil clawing at the back of my throat and me wrapped in my dad's oversized jumper, the sleeves rolled up time and again on my childish arms. But there was nowhere on the planet I'd rather be on a damp, overcast, windy August evening, jumping down from the harbour wall, little bare-toed, bare-toed summer sandaled feet splashing through miniature veins of river tributaries on the rough concrete of the pier then scurrying after my dad's size 12 footsteps, little fingertips running along the high harbour wall, the early evening harbour lights catching the ripple motion as each of his footprints was vacated, until one by one the boats chugged past us, navigating the tight twists and turns of the inner harbour walls, past the ice house, the green moss slipways, leaving the angry sea and its hungry belly behind for another day. Taking their berths, we'd stand alongside on the quay, among ropes thick as my wrists, as crates of fish were thrown from the deck of the small skiffs up into the strong waiting arms of the crew, their feet now rooted on concrete. Crates were stacked before being loaded onto trolleys, the boats swaying and dipping as voices called instructions and shouted jovial obscenities. The catch, boat and crew, all now safe in the harbour's embrace, the day though not yet over for these hard-working weary men. We'd shout down to the crew, any chance for a few herring, and they'd laugh and shout for a bag. Wafts of diesel, the heaving of grimy yellow and orange oilskin clad fishermen, boats jockeying and grinding for position against the harbour walls, reels and monstrous ropes heaved ashore, heavy dulcet tones ringing out amongst barely broken voices, the clatter of plastic crates and the torrential outpouring of ice machinery and winches whining in the evening air, drizzly rain clinging to jackets, jumper and hair, chains and nets for repair, clanking, grating, catching, a cacophony of vibrant harbour noises, sights, aromas, absorbed by a young mind. And suddenly from somewhere a plastic bag would materialise, and six or eight weighty beauties were slipped into their travel bag and carried as precious cargo back to the car, after much waving, smiling, and the offering and refusal of money, the bag dripping in a wash with fish oils. A peek into the bag on the way home, and I knew at once there'd be plenty of roe on the pan this evening. These beauties would deliver. 
I helped my mum and granny with the washing, gutting and cleaning, dipping the fish and roe into flour, then listened to the sizzle and skite from the pan on the aga, warm smells filling the kitchen, and someone laughing and shouting to others to open the back pantry door and let the smell out. Teeth sinking into the crispy skin, into the soft, sweet, salty flesh. The roe squeezed between tongue and roof of mouth, popping with flavour. And the huge cup of McCann's loaf to accompany the offerings, swiping fish skeletons and bones around the oily plate, wiping the plate clean. Happy, smiling, laughing faces round the table. Yes, a feast awaited indeed. Kilkeel Harbour sang to me as a child on cold, wintry nights in London, waiting for the summer to come, that I could go home. For the draw of the sea is too great for a mere human being. Today, though, I see the grey tattoo etched on liquid sunken eyes of those who look to the horizon, waiting, forever waiting. In Kilkeel I have come home, with the sea I am as one, I am at peace. Thank you.